بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Life is a gift from Allah Jalla Jalaluhu Amma Nawaluhu We have a short time, a short span of life to prepare to find us Allah A person seeking a treasure exhausts all avenues to make sure they get to the treasure They'll risk everything even their lives to get to the treasure. More valuable than all the treasures on earth is the treasure of finding the Rabb of the earth, the Khalik of the earth, Malik al razak So daily the passing of time is a lesson, it is an Ibra, it is the signs in front of us. After seeing so much suffering Today people are healthy, tomorrow they are ill. We are hearing the announcements daily. These are all signs. Today somebody is breathing normal. Tomorrow he's struggling to breathe. Today we can eat whatever we want, whatever our hearts desire. We can prepare, order, arrange. Tomorrow you won't want to go near the food. Today somebody can sleep like a baby. Tomorrow he can't even catch a wink. Today somebody is walking, they riding, they jogging, they in the gym. Tomorrow they bed ridden, they can't even lift their hands up. Today you can hug somebody, you can love your, you can hug your beloveds, your loved ones. Tomorrow you can't even get near to them. Today you are sharing a bed with somebody. Tomorrow you are alone. Today you are alive, tomorrow you are dead. These are all signs for the people of Iman to teach us this heart has a capacity for love and it should be drowning in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Not dunya, not the things of the dunya, the distractions, Allah's command, Allah's priority, what Allah's requirements are is clear. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ Not even your parents. وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ Not your children. وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ Not your brothers, not your sisters. وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ Not even your husbands, your wives, your spouses. وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ Not even your family. وَأَمْوَالُ نِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا Not even the wealth which you've gathered, which you've amassed which you've benefited from the wealth which you've put as a plan B. I've got so many Kruger coins, I've got an offshore account, I've stored this investment portfolio, I've got this property, I've got these stocks, none of it. وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا Even your businesses, your empire, وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا even the beloved palaces, buildings, houses, structures that you've built, your beloved homes. Eight things Allah has mentioned. Ahabba ilaykum min Allahi wa rasulihi. Allah, His Rasul, wa jihadin fi sabilihi. And striving in the path of Allah. Mufassirin explained. Fi nusrati deenillah. Your effort to make the deen of Allah alive. Ulama summarize it in two parts. They say Allah and His Rasul is one and bringing that alive is two. The love of Allah and the love of the life of Nabi alayhi salatu to bring that alive in the Ummah. فَتَرَبَّسُوا Then wait. Different commentaries have been given. Wait for what? For the command of Allah to manifest, for, for, for Allah's unseen help to come, for Allah's adab to come. So ulama explain minimum love, if we had to identify a pass rate, 51% for Allah and His Rasul, and striving in His path to make that alive, striving to bring the deen of Allah alive, and 49% the other eight things. Below that is fail. 
100% is the priority and the target. So every movement, our loving, our dying, our breathing, our every haraka is for Allah. Muhammad ibn Fudayl al-Balkhi rahimallah used to say مَا خَتَوْتُ مُنْذُ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً I have not for 40 years taken any step لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ for anything besides Allah. Other than Allah, I never moved one step. So when the love of Allah is in the heart, then there's no motive except Allah. Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimullah used to say some poetry with regards to this. That are you genuine or are you fake? Is it just words or reality? Ta'sil ila wa anta tudhiru muhubbahu. You say you love Allah, but your every action is contrary to what Allah has commanded you. هذا محال في القياس بديع. This is not possible. You can't make a statement and your actions are contrary. لو كان حبك صادقا لا أطعته. If your love was genuine, you would have obeyed Allah. إن المحب لما يحب مطيع. A lover is obedient to his beloved. If you love Allah, every command of Allah would have been beloved. في كل يوم تبتديك بنعمة. في كل يوم يبتديك بنعمة. Every day you are seen the bounties of Allah manifest itself. Every day you are witnessing the نعم and the bounties of Allah. وأنت لشكر ذاك مضيء. But you are void. You fall short to show Allah, to display to Allah that you are genuine. Use that same money to disobey Allah. Use that same eye to look at haram. Use that same tongue to make a riba. You use that same mind to plan evil. The Sula used to say, Man adhnaba wa huwa yadhak. Person is committing guna, but he laughs. Nowadays with social media, the fact that I promote my guna on a platform, it's like laughing at Allah, laughing at the farishtas. This is what I can do. Look, watch. He will enter Jahannam crying. Woman adhnaba wa huwa yabki. Somebody committed a guna and they cry. Nobody can know about it. Only Allah knows about it. Let me make peace with my creator and my maker. It's got regret and remorse. He will enter Jannah smiling, laughing, elated. So every movement should be for Allah. But I mean Abdullah used to say, كُلُّ سُكُوتٍ لَا يَكُونُ فِيهِ فِكْرٌ فَهُوَ سَهْوٌ Every silence where there is no movement does not take you closer to Allah. Then that's wasted. That's wasted. وَكُلُّ كَلَامٍ لَا يَكُونُ حِكْمَةً فَهُوَ لَغْوٌ And every speech that does not have any wisdom, you don't speak good, فَهُوَ لَغْوٌ Then that is foolish talk, it is just jargon. وَكُلُّ نَظْرٍ لَا يَكُونُ عِبْرَةً فَهُوَ لَغْوٌ And every gaze where you do not take lesson and come closer to Allah, that is just a pastime, a amusement, and an entertainment, nothing else. So we need to be checking ourselves all the time. How much change, how much closeness am I getting to my Allah? For that we need to go to the ulama, go to the friends of Allah, go to the sulaha. Somebody wants bread, they go to the bakery. You want a service to your vehicle, you go to the mechanic. You want to find Allah, where do you go? Where do you go? They say, ulama, uh, the maqula of the ulama is, مُجَالَسَةُ الْعَارِفْ بِاللَّا تَدْعُوكَ مِنْ خَمْسَةٍ إِلَىٰ خَمْسَةٍ When you sit with the ulama, the friends of Allah, it will take you from five things to five things. مِنَ الشَّكِّ إِلَىٰ الْيَقِينَ from doubt to conviction. So much propaganda has been made, we believe it. Such what said to the friends of Allah, they'll, be, they'll convince one that Akhirat and the promise of Allah and His Rasul is genuine. وَمِنَ الْرِيَاءِ إِلَى الْإِخْلَاسِ 
from show and ostentation to sincerity. We're doing everything for show. We're buying things for show. We're owning things for show. We, we're promoting on platforms only show. No ikhlas. Even the Hajj I'm doing, even the Umrah, I need to show people. وَمِنَ الْغَفْلَةِ إِلَى الذِّكْرِ From negligence to remembrance of Allah. We are so ghafil, even in sajda, when we're supposed to be closest to Allah, we are furthest away from Allah. وَمِنَ الرَّغْبَةِ فِي الدُّنْيَا إِلَى التَّعَلُّقِ بِالْآخِرَةِ And from inclination to dunya, to disinclination, and inclining, and having attention to akhirah. وَمِنْ سُوءِ الطَّوِيَّةِ إِلَى النَّسِيَةِ And where a person is self-motivated, you're only looking at your own benefit and seeing self-benefit to benefit in humanity. So this love of Allah is the criteria. This is the yardstick of life. Imam Shafi'i used to say a poem, أَحِبُّ الصَّالِهِينَ وَلَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ I love the righteous, but I'm not part of them. I'm hopeful that through these pious people, my intercession will get made. I'll get my akhirah through the pious. And I stay far away. I despise those who trade in guna and sin. The order of the day is disobedience. وَإِن كُنَّا سَوَاءً فِي الْبِضَاءَ Although we are both in dealing in the same trade, means I'm filled with flaws as well. When Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahimahullah had us, he, he gave a reply to Imam Shafi rahimahullah alayhi, to hibbu salihin wa anta minum. Oh Imam Shafi, listen to me, you love the righteous and I'm telling you, you are them. You are one of them. You don't need to be part of them. Rafiqul qawmi yalhaqu bil jama'ati. And if somebody who is a companion of some people will end up in their company. And you despise those people who trade in sin. May Allah protect you from that evil trade. May Allah protect you. So sin is, is dangerous. It is a red zone, no-go zone. And the opposite of that is taqwa. That's what we are busy with the topic of taqwa. The 28th benefit of taqwa for the muttaqeen is that the provision in dunya and akhirat, Allah will provide and suffice. And that becomes a provision. Taqwa. وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ taqwa. Prepare for akhirat, prepare for dunya. And your provision the best provision is taqwa. وَاتَّقُونِ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ A person came to Nabi alayhi salam and said, Ya Rasool Allah, un inni uridu safaran fazawidni. I want to travel, tell me some provisions. Nabi alayhi salam said, O kama qal zawwadaka Allahu taqwa. May Allah make your provision taqwa. He said, Zidni increase me. Qala wa ghafara dhambak. May Allah forgive your sins. May Allah protect you from guna. Qala zidni bi abi anta wa ummi. Oh, more advice, O oh, Nabi of Allah. Wa yassar laka al khair haythu ma kunta. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of goodness no matter where you are. So when somebody is traveling also, it is masnoon to make this dua. So taqwa is a means of provisions. Such a provision, it will suffice for dunya and akhirat. There was a poor person who lived in Makkatul Mukarrama and his wife was a noble, pious, chaste lady. So one day the situation was such that they were in dire need. So she told her husband, Ya Zawji Al Aziz, Laysa indana ta'am na'akulhu. We do not have any provisions nor clothing to wear. See what arrangements can be made. So he went out to look for some work. He did not find anything after exhausting all avenues. He went to the Baytullah. He read two rakat salat and cried in front of Allah. Once he finished from the haram, he was returning home. And en route, he found a bag. He picked it up and opened it and it was a thousand dinars. As he went home, he told his wife. The wife said, not permissible. It is lukta, it is uh, somebody's lost commodity. You need to return it. So he went back 
And on, on route he found a person saying Man wajada kaysan fihi alf dinar Anybody has found a, a, a bag, a pouch with a thousand dinars So this person was uh, elated when he gave him the bag The old man was, was thrilled to, to find the owner When the owner seen him and uh, verified that it was his bag He said take the bag and here's a nine thousand more Here's a 9,000 more, so you've got 10,000 dinars, gold coins. He was surprised. He said, doesn't make sense, it's your amanat, take it back. He said, لَكَدْ أَعْطَانِي رَجُلٌ مِّن بِلَادِ الشَّامِ Somebody gave me 10,000 dinars, he wanted to give it to somebody in sadaqah. He said, throw the 1,000 in the precincts of the haram. The person that comes back and returns it, give him all 10,000. He is Sadiq, he is Muttaqi, and the Muttaqi, they deserve the provisions of dunya and akhirat. They deserve the provisions of dunya and akhirat. And he returned home and when he narrated the incident, the wife said that Tilka Batilka, what you left came back moreover. What you left came back moreover. So when we leave something, sometimes we gain more. This is not logic. It is the unseen system of Allah. That's why Alama say, Man taraka shay'an lillah. When a person leaves something for Allah, awwad Allah khayran minu, Allah will give you a recompense better than that. Leaving guna is part of that as well. Allah will give us a recompense. Mubarak Rahimallah was freed and he started working in a garden and the owner of the garden once came with his entourage and he told Mubarak bring the best pomegranate in the garden so he brought the pomegranates and it was butter so he said Anta ma ta'rif al hul min al hamid do you not know that which is sweet and butter so Mubarak replied, you never gave me permission so they know which is sweet and which is butter. So he thought so he was lying. So he did some research, monitoring, surveillance. He said, Anta mundu kada wa kada sana, you stay in here, you have security and you're saying that you never ever ate one pomegranate. So he asked the other workers, he inquired from the neighbors and he said, this person here, we've never seen him eating one pomegranate his entire life. And they had good words about him and they verified that he never ate one pomegranate. So then later on the owner of the garden came back to Mubarak and said if somebody wanted to marry their daughter what would be the criteria? So he replied, Inna al -yahuda. The, the Jews marry al al -mal. person's got wealth, they'll find that person. وَالنَّصَارَى يُزَوِّجُونَ عَلَى الْجَمَالِ And the Christians look for beauty, external beauty. وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُزَوِّجُونَ عَلَى التَّقْوَى And the people of Iman look at taqwa. So see, فَانْذُرْ مِنْ أَيِّ النَّاسِ أَنْتَ Decide, you want to be of this group or this group here? So the owner said, Will I ever find somebody better than you? Will you marry my daughter? So he agreed, nikah was made and Alama explained, besides Allah giving him a beautiful pretty wife which was affluent and wealthy, Allah sorted his need there, then wealth came with it and Allah gave him pious progeny as well and among those progeny which we just read the shi'ar in the poem of Abdullah Ibn Mubarak Rahmatullah Alayhi So taqwa is such a, a, a door, a channel which is a provision for dunya and akhirah The amal for today is that to make a believer happy so whatever the situation we see anybody in stress whatever difficulty try to remove that difficulty أفضل الأعمال إدخال السرور على المؤمن. The best أعمال, the most virtuous أعمال is making a believer happy. كسوت عورته أو أشبعت جوعته أو قضيت له حاجة. Whether you gave him clothing, 
whether you fed him, whether you fulfill his needs, this is part of the best of ma'amal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.